Before we start, I'd like to give a quick shout out to the sponsors of this video, Lord of Heroes. Lord of Heroes is an up and coming anime RPG that's completely free to play. Immerse yourself in the world with its engaging story and spectacular graphics and effects. It's a turn based game that could remind you of some other games while giving you access to almost 50 knights who all come with their own charms and traits. If you're feeling a bit salty with your roles, I've got some good news for you. Add a couple of zeros and turn those 1% odds into 100% odds when recruiting characters because Lord of Heroes has no character gacha. Why not try that to go for the new upcoming character Sophie? In addition to adding new content, Lord of Heroes also introduces a brand new alchemy system. For only 2,000 crystals, you get a hero of your choosing and the best news is that it can be done three times a month. So after watching this video, feel free to click the link in the description and start playing Lord of Heroes. A whole new world of fun awaits. Ah, one of the most divisive and controversial topics in anime history, the overpowered character. Personally, I like discussing them. They're not my favorite character types, but there's really this unique kind of enjoyment seeing some characters just play one-man armies or blow an opponent out of the water with insane abilities that they seemingly keep whipping out of nowhere. Whether you love them or hate them, overpowered characters are here to stay. The year 2020 alone has seen a lot of them, either on the side of good, evil, and some in between. Join me as I take a look at some of the most overpowered characters that made their presence felt this year. We're not doing a countdown from 1 to 10 this time, for the most part, because how can we order these monsters according to power without causing a whole power level and who would win debate? So hit that subscribe button and let's get the ball rolling on this list. <laughs> The nickname says it all. Kaido is known as the strongest creature for good reason. One of the four emperors, this humongous being is one of the Straw Hat's toughest adversaries to date. Given how long One Piece has been going on, that's really saying something. I think that when it comes to the sheer intimidation factor, few can match up with Kaido in his overpowering and terrifying appearance. Even our heroes are no match, and Luffy does go down in one hit. And if that's not enough, he also has a devil fruit that allows him to transform into a dragon, making the monster of an emperor even more of a threat to all life. In this form, his blast breath is truly one to be afraid of. I wonder how this insane creature can be overcome once everything's said and done. Time to praise the sun, because our next overpowered character of 2020 is Escanor from The Seven Deadly Sins. The latest season of Seven Deadly Sins, which aired this year, became famous and trending for a lot of the wrong reasons. A lot of it, unfortunately, has to do with how Escanor's fight got handled. However, that's got nothing to do with the state of the character that we're going to be focusing on. I'm sure that it's a given now that Seven Deadly Sins features an interesting take on shonen where everyone is overpowered. Then it makes sense to have someone to be a special kind of overpowered, as we can see with Escanor. At first glance, Escanor doesn't look like someone so overpowered compared to his peers, but with the help of some sunlight, the man turns into a beast. You just have to watch or read his fight with Meliodas to see that power in action. The two went blow for blow, but when the smoke's cleared, it's clear that Escanor has decisively won the fight. It's not easy to take down Meliodas, the leader of the Seven Deadly Sins, in battle, but Escanor did it to open up the year in dominant fashion. That makes him one of the most overpowered characters in 2020 in my book. We resume our list with another freak of nature in the midst of already powerful characters, Yujiro Hanma. We've seen how anything goes in the world of Baki, and like Escanor, you have to be a special kind of overpowered in order to stand out and make it to this list. Luckily for Yujiro, he's the undisputed strongest character in the series. No ifs, no buts. Yujiro is at the very top of the Baki tier list and no one even comes close. Where else can you see someone who can defeat an entire army's worth of opponents by himself? He was just a teenager at that time, mind you, and fought his battles with his bare hands. He has an arsenal that consists of pretty much every martial art known to man. Karate, boxing, taekwondo, you name it. If it's not in his arsenal, he can just learn it and master it immediately. That's just how good he is. The scary part about Yujiro is that as insanely powerful as he is physically, he's also quite the cunning fighter. You'd expect a fighter that's all brawn and no brain looking at him, but come on, how do you think that brute strength alone would put him where he is right now? <laughs> Sp 
Speaking of taking on armies, how about taking on literal gods? Enter Tiamat. <laughs> To cap off the thrilling ride that is Fate Grand Order Babylonia, our heroes take on literally the biggest enemy that threatens the continued existence of the human race as a whole. And they're not just taking on any god, they're taking on Tiamat, the mother of all life. And that title is not just for show. Initially dispatched with one noble phantasm, Tiamat emerges in her true form as she begins her march towards Uruk. A march that serves more like a countdown to destruction as nothing, and I mean nothing, can stop her advancing. The good guys pretty much spend episodes throwing their best attacks at her to no avail, and even when she plunges down to where she's at her weakest, the hero still had a lot of trouble. In the anime, she only gets defeated with a combination of trait manipulating powers, having her power source hit, talk no jitsu, and give Gilgamesh's Enuma Elish on her lone weak spot. What a raid boss it was, and the whole bunch of episodes for the boss fight was one of the most glorious sequences in the whole Babylonia series. While we're not yet too far from Tiamat, the mother of all life isn't the only one who lost just because of an all your powers combined attack. The same goes for Sword Art Online's final antagonist in War of Underworld, Subtilizer. <laughs> Our heroes get one case of fake relief when Gabrielle, who logged in as Dark Lord Vector, got defeated by none other than Bercoli. Getting rid of a god account on the enemy side is such a big plus that it seems that the war has been won. Well, at first at least. The bad news for our protagonist is that Gabrielle isn't truly dead and that he's already learned the truth of Underworld and how it works when he logs in with his actual gaming account, Subtilizer. In a world where willpower and imagination make everything possible, nothing can compare and stand up to the deranged machinations inside inside Gabriel's mind. Being able to will and imagine every attack only adds to his already insane skills in gaming and real life military experience. We already know that Kirito is overpowered, but even he needed to get bailed out multiple times in the decisive clash, only winning with ally intervention and the literal powers of every being in Underworld combined in his attack. Like Theomoth, it's unlikely that Subtilizer loses cleanly in a straight up fight against anyone. Next member of our overpowered character cast maintains a sinister appearance. Fresh off for TV series debut, we have Rai. Shizamatsuke. Korega. Honlai Arbeki. In the world of webtoons, there's a character synonymous with overpowered, and that's none other than Rai of Nobles. First off, Rai is the Nobles, the most powerful of the nobles, having woken up years into modern society and not lost a step. Kind of like another character that we'll be featuring further down the line, as a matter of fact. I made this joke in Rimuru before, but just look at Rai's wiki page and just look at that list. His mere presence is enough to scare people, and he has the powers to justify that reaction. Even in universe, it's agreed upon that Rai is the most powerful character and the world of Nobles has a lot of people that are no slouches in any definition of the word. Then again, with an appearance and a brooding aura like that, are we really surprised? Koreans sure love their overpowered characters. I say that because our next overpowered character is also a Korean creation. So now we move on to Jin Mori. Does God of High School's protagonist live up to the name of the tournament? Let's say yes. God of High School has had a turbulent run, the most out of the summer 2020 shows I'd say. No matter what your opinion on the adaptation is though, I guess we can agree that for someone who got an ass kicking as his motivation to enter the tournament, our protagonist here has flipped the switch in an astounding manner. God of High School really is an anime that's all about fights, and it's those fights that allow the anime team to at least showcase what Jin is capable of. He may not be insane as Rai in terms of power, but consider the fact that Jin is just a 17 year old human, right? Right? I won't be spoiling important plot points down the line, but without the benefit of hindsight, early Jin and his powers are a sight to behold. If you want to see more of him in action, please read the webtoon for God of High School. Trust me, the anime just doesn't show enough in the adapted episodes, and Jin's powers get even crazier the further you go into the webtoon.
Our runner-up is Dengeki Bunko's poster boy for overpowered protagonists, Tatsuya Shiba. What can Tatsuya not do, really? In season one, he brought himself back to life. He did the same for his allies. He can decompose all kinds of magic. He can win a shootout against a sniper using his pistol. He can melt a runaway truck from inside a building. The list just goes on and on and on. No wonder he became a meme character. Well, now that we've got a second season of Irregular at Magic High School airing, expect to see more of the same. Having read the light novel, I'd say that his feats this season will be toned down a little bit. But make no mistake, He's still broken the protagonist that we all laughed at half a decade ago. Only a fool would underestimate the old god of high school. At least that's what I would have said had the next character not existed. Tatsuya would have easily topped the list, but his reign as the poster boy for overpowered memes gained a sudden new challenger this 2020. Look, for how overpowered he is, at least Tatsuya still does things within the bounds of logic in his world. <laughs> And the new poster boy for overpowered characters in 2020 is... Arnos Voldigode. Misfit of Demon King Academy really is the one punch man of power fantasy light novels. We make memes out of Tatsuya, but even he had his ever slight moments where he can't do or know it all. Not for Anos. In fact, a sarcastic person would say that Misfit of Demon King Academy's point is all about parodying the overpowered character archetype and exaggerating it to hilarious levels. I personally find merit with the character dynamics and the story in other ways to defend the show as not just being such, but come on, just Look at his feats. He can't even die if he's killed. He kills people without contact only to revive them just so he can kill them again. He can transform people at will after beating them. The list just goes on and on. And I don't know if anyone else would fit the bill of being 2020's Mr. Overpowered than the Demon Lord member of the Dengeki Bunko Trio. Oh look. We stopped the nine characters. Do you have any character in mind to fill out the list so that we can reach 10 entries? Share it with the world in the comment section below. And I'd love to see what you have in mind. I mean, I also had honorable mentions in mind. By the way, hope you had fun as we start the race to end 2020. It's been quite fun despite the year being a downer overall. And I think that the anime industry had one great recovery. Before you leave, make sure to subscribe so that you can be the first in line for the next Vinitube video. Don't forget to check out our sponsors of this video, Lord of Heroes. The link's in the description. I'll see you next time on Vinitube.